Friday evening, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's the uh, video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about the weekend forecast in this video. We'll talk some about an interesting storm at the end of next week, which we don't have many answers on, but it's kind of the next item of interest in the uh, medium range forecast. In the meantime, let's look backwards. Uh, today was the coolest day in a while, but it was still right about average uh, after a long stretch of above average temperatures, which immediately followed, of course, the big Arctic attack right around Christmas time, but uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or ten days in a row of well above average temperatures, followed by a much more seasonable day today with highs in the mid 30s. And at the airport, we had our first measurable snow accumulation of the calendar year 2023. 0.3 inches officially recorded at the airport today. Most of us, of course, basically had nothing. Uh, any snowflakes melted on contact. We've had flurries from time to time, of course, since late last night. It was a different story on this date back in 2014. This was the polar vortex winter, the uh, winter in which that kind of geeky meteorological term came to prominence. Uh, it was used by a lot of national outlets, and it was a way to explain why was it was so cold. Uh, meteorologists fought back on that somewhat and continue to fight back on terms like that, which aren't new, but they sound cool, so they make their way into the lexicon, and, and you know, uh, the polar vortex, of course, nothing new and nothing that hits your house or something like that, but that's kind of the way it's described sometimes. Anyway, uh, we were getting a visit from a chunk of the polar vortex anyway on this date back in 2014 with a record low established at the Youngstown Warren Airport, minus 11. We had two pretty bad winters in a row, and actually the last time we had cold winters, these back-to-back -back winters, 2013-14 and 14 into 15. We have been spoiled ever since. As of this recording at 716, not much going on out there. A lot of clouds, some flurries. I think there'll be a little uptick in flurry and snow shower activity this evening, but uh, little, if any, impacts in most areas. Could there be a little dusting here and there? I can't rule that out. And ge generally, what you see is what you get, not only tonight, but into our Saturday. I think flurries are going to stick around into our Saturday. Now, most of the time, it's just going to be cloudy and uneventful, kind of like today. But occasionally, there'll be a flurry that passes through. The clouds will then finally start to clear out a couple of hours after sunset Saturday evening. We'll start Sunday with a little bit of sunshine, maybe some fog. And then clouds will increase once again in the afternoon. We'll get grazed by this system kind of passing by to the south. Rain or a snow shower, a possibility for a time Monday night. And then I think we'll see a fairly sunny afternoon coming up on our Monday. All right, so 35 on Saturday, again, just like today. Uh, we'll do a little bit better on Sunday thanks to a little bit of sunshine in the morning. It turns out mostly cloudy in the afternoon. The seasonable weekend will be followed by a warm-up next week. Not upper 50s and 60s like we've had, but some lower 40s in our forecast for Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday and Thursday. Be a brief cool down at the end of the week. And speaking of the end of the week, this is when, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the video, the next kind of uh, item of interest heads our way, or at least tries to head our way. There's a lot of question marks about how this will evolve. Let's fast forward to next Thursday and Friday. Ejecting out of the Rockies, this system right here, and it will strengthen as it comes east. Now, how much does it strengthen? Does it take on a positive or negative tilt? Does it track more towards the Great Lakes or more kind of towards the Mid-Atlantic? All those things will be important as to timing of precipitation, what kind of precipitation we'll see. This is just one run of one model suggesting that uh, it takes a track that would actually pump in some warmth and probably bring us mostly rain uh, for a time on Friday. Other models have some colder air infiltrating, a little bit of a southerly track to the storm. Maybe we get in on, in on some uh, wintry precipitation at some point late next week. So we're going to keep our eye on Thursday night, Friday, maybe into Friday night next week. Could just be a chilly rain event. Could there be some mixed precipitation or even just some perhaps impactful snow? All those things are possible at this point. We're a week away, but things are going to be quiet till then, so I thought I'd touch on uh, where we stand so far. Uh, there's going to be some sort of system, but you know, there's just not much cold air in place ahead of that. Uh, the conditions for a sizable snow event anywhere with that, it's going to be tough because uh, it's going to have to thread the needle. Uh, and what we mean by that, it's going to have to take a very favorable track to tap into any cold that's there, and it might have to just make its own cold um, because the air mass that will be in place ahead of that will not be particularly cold. Hope you and yours have a great Friday night and a great weekend. Thanks for watching tonight. I'll see you right back here on Monday.